Okay, well, thank you everyone for joining us today. We just wanted to take this time to uh, give you a bit of an introduction into data sets. So we want to get in and start working with some data. So here in the data sets, we have some applications data for institutions. We have some financial data, some HR data. So we, you can play around with different types of data. Uh, for today, we're just going to focus on the application data set. So if I want to access this data set, I can just simply double click into it and it's going to show me the, the data in that data set. And then once I'm here within the data set, I can start interacting with the data very easily. And everything that I do here is specific to my user. So I'm not going to be changing the way other users see this data. This is my personal uh, view and preferences of, of the data. So one of the things that I can do is sort my data set. So I can do that just by clicking the column header on which I want to sort. So if I want to sort by last name, for example, I just click the last name column and that will sort the, the data set by last name uh, in ascending order. If I click it again, it's going to flip it to a descending order. And then if I click it a third time, it's going to go back to the default sort order, whatever that might be. You can add multiple sort levels by holding down the shift key and then selecting the subsequent columns that you want to sort on. So that would allow you to uh, sort by more than one column. I can move columns around if I want to reorder them. So if I want to move gender down here, for example, I can rearrange that column however I like. Uh, each column has a drop down menu that you can see different options that you can set for this particular field. So if I want to move the column, I can actually select where I want it to go in the column order. You can also do filtering uh, very quickly here, and we'll talk about filtering in just a minute, as well as aggregates. So you can uh, set those uh, settings for your own personal preference here from this menu. You can group by a particular field. If you click, the, the again, the, the drop-down menu, you can choose group, and that's going to group the, the data set by that particular column value. Uh, we can add additional grouping if we wanted to by clicking the plus here and, and selecting you know, the, the appropriate column that I want to group within each other of the other groups. And then we can expand those just by clicking the little arrow by the grouping. I can remove a particular group if I like. And then I can choose a particular aggregate value here. Right now, by default, it will use the count of the number of entries for each group value. I can add aggregate values if I wanted to by clicking the little calculator icon here and we'll see some different columns that we can choose from. So maybe I want to total by this meal plan amount. So maybe I've, I'm capturing that data in the data set and I want to see the total amount that the student selected for their meal plan. So that would then aggregate that value to each group. and if I want to clear that, then I can click the X and that will remove my grouping and aggregate selections there. The filter option that I mentioned earlier, you can filter your data set by clicking on the show filter icon here. And then I can filter in a number of different ways. So if I just start typing a value, so for example, if I type city and press return, I'm going to get all the, the rows that have the text city somewhere in one of the columns. So you'll see here the, the county here has Richmond City in it, or this one, the city is Union City. So it, uh, it looks for that value anywhere in the data set and presents it. And I can add additional sort options here. So if I want to see all the Smiths where there's word, a word city in the, the row, so it matches Smith anywhere in the, the row. So we can add as many of those as we want. Or if I want to filter on a specific column, I can either click the, the plus here and add or select from the column list here. So maybe I want to filter on gender, for example. I can select whether I want to do distinct values or some other operator. If I choose distinct values, then I get a list of the distinct values from that column, and then I can select that value. And I can add additional filter options by clicking the plus here and then selecting the appropriate 
uh, column again, and then I can choose that. So I can continue to add as many criteria as I like. So that uh, sets that filter up. So now I'm looking at just the females for the academic year 2015-2016. And then I can remove that, that filter. Uh, you can also do the same thing just by clicking the down arrow and selecting the filter option from that column and then choosing the appropriate operator and then the value there. You're able to save those filters and we provided some examples of save filters here that you see listed so you can apply those very quickly so I can see applications ready for review. If I'm wanting to get just the list of those applications, I can click on that and now I'm looking at only of the applications that have a status of ready for review. And I can click on that filter and see the criteria that's behind that. Each thing within Informer, like data sets and so forth, has this actions menu over here. So, it, and depending on what you're viewing, depends on the options that uh, you see in the actions menu itself. So, uh, here for my data set, my actions menu, I'm able to export my data set into any number of different formats. So, if I want to, say, export this to a CSV file, I can export that and it's going to export the data out to that format and download it to my desktop. And then I'm able to open that, that file in my spreadsheet application and view it that way. Uh, if I've made any changes here, like moving columns around, as I said, any of the things that I do here is specific to my user profile. And if I want to go back to viewing the data set as it was originally and get rid of those settings, I can click that clear user settings. And now I'm back to viewing the data set as it was originally. I can also create a quick data view report and we'll talk about data view reports when we go into the reports uh, option here. Data access tokens allow me to access my data outside of Informer. So if I create that access token, then I'm able to actually uh, take that and in this example here, bring up a, a terminal window. And if I paste that command in now, I'm going to get my data set back in whatever format that's specified there in the in the URL, depending on the output option here. So if I choose CSV, then I'm going to get the data in CSV format. So I can access the data externally from Informer. And then lastly, I'm, uh, we, this is an example of a plugin that we created that adds functionality to the to the product. This is not something that comes standard with the product, but we have partnered with the iData company that develops the data cookbook to add an option here to our menu so we can interface with that application and bring up documentation about whatever I'm looking at here. So if I click on this data cookbook uh, menu option here, I get the their cookbook entry for this particular data set that has all the definitions about the different columns that are in the data set and a uh, description of the data set itself, what it's used for, and so forth. So it's a great application for documenting your processes and documenting your uh, reports and, and definitions. That's not something that we sell. That, again, is a product that is sold by iData. Feel free to go over to datacookbook.com and, and look, th look at that application if you want to check that out. Now, there's another way that you can actually get data into Informer. So you don't have to have the data represented in, in a database somewhere. You can actually take spreadsheet data and pull that into Informer itself. So I have a, a spreadsheet that I have here. Uh, so we can take this one. So I can uh, pull in uh, one of these data sets here and I can create. Whoops, sorry, I need to move this around just a second so I can get to my window, resize that a little bit. So I can take this uh, data set or this CSV file or Excel spreadsheet, drag that on to Informer, and it's going to allow me to create a data set from that data. So now I have the, the data here and I can then work with this data however I need to, just like a regular data set. 
So that's pretty much the, the overview of Informer 5 data sets. If you have any questions, feel free to send an email into Informer Sales at intrinsic.com and folks will be glad to answer your question. We're always happy to answer any questions that you may have.